paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Want to know how to liven up a classic family-friendly living and dining room using bright, bold color? I'm going to show you how, right now. Great design comes from a winning formula. Mine is as basic as a set of building blocks. Put them together, add up the results, and you've got a sensational room. Today's case study is Debbie and Dave's narrow and cramped Victorian-style living and dining room. I'm showing you how to open up a tight space like this with vibrant color and keep it family-friendly. I'd love more light. I want it to feel a little more current, a little more modern. I want it to feel contemporary. It reminds me of the bottom of Battleship. It's dark. There's no energy to it at all. I feel like I've landed in every era that I've ever lived in, and then some. This room is a mishmash. It has no focus, no direction, and it's not realizing its full potential. Let's talk about these floors. There's a nail popping through right here. Okay. Once you're at this point, a refinisher can't do anything about it. Floors like this need a solution, and so do these dated wall treatments. The walls are not the biggest worry we have. The ceilings are a major concern. This is looking like the telltale sign of a very bad renovation. Definitely, it's the surface of another planet. It's not good. So far, we're fixing walls, ceilings, floors. Is there going to be anything left for any other area? And we've got lots of areas to address. In addition to flooring and ceiling repairs, we need to find uplifting fabrics, add in versatile seating and storage, freshen the paint and glam up the drapes update the lighting, and find a suitable dining solution. If you've got an old stucco ceiling that's relatively smooth and hasn't had any patchwork done, it's okay to keep it in my books. However, over time, these ceilings tend to crack. Then they get repaired, and the stipple or the new stucco never matches. That's when it needs to be replaced. For this ceiling, it's going to run about $3,000. And while the joists are exposed, it makes sense to add soundproof insulation. It makes a world of difference in a wood frame home. As the ceiling is being taken care of, now is the time to find our jumping off point. Instead of leaning on white to lighten a dark space, why not see what bold, vibrant color can do? Wow. This is a classic modern floral for me. I love it. It's bold, it's oversized, it's overscaled, and it has incredible rich color. I can go for the reds, the pinks, the yellows, the blues, the greens. I can go anywhere with this, but what I do know is it would be awesome on an upholstered piece of furniture. Now to fill in the scheme with other bold fabrics so that the sofa, drapery, and accent pillows help to make the space brighter. I'm fully committed to the bold floral. Okay. The question is, where to use it? Can we explore the idea of putting it on furniture as upholstery? It's a thick enough weave, and it's got enough pattern, it's got enough color, and it's got enough happening. An overscaled floral on a sofa makes it too much of a focal point, but on a smaller sculptural accent chair, it works. I was dreaming of a pink sofa. I'm totally on board with that. $9.99 a yard in cotton. And I was thinking, what if you did the seat in something plush, like this strie velvet? It really depends on the style of the sofa. Oh, I'm thinking classic. Sold. And then if you did the velvet on the seat, what if you also did an accent piping? That right. looks amazing to me. So what is the best backdrop for that sofa? Would you ever go with a white or a cream silk? You want to have beautiful silk somewhere, and silk is inappropriate as cushions or obviously as upholstery. Right. So you could think about doing it on the windows. Right. And what about if we added, see this silk as a band, and then you would get a color blocking effect going up the side of the drape? Then I found this little hand woven rug, incredible colors. This grounds it a little bit. So mm -hmm. I was thinking we could use this as upholstery for an ottoman. It's got darker colors, so you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about people putting their feet up on it or somebody spills something on it. Do you it's like this? Fantastic, I love it. 
So the sofa is bold pink with accent piping to give it zip. The overscaled floral is perfectly suited to the accent chairs. Classic silk for the drapes and a patterned rug will upholster a family-friendly ottoman. Now to find a furniture piece to delineate functions in an open concept space. What if we move to something very neutral, used something inexpensive like this for an additional piece, like a chaise or a daybed, something that might bisect the two rooms. And I like the way now we have the tie between the pattern, the solid, and the light neutral. And I think that, that creates a nice harmony. Can I have some pink pillows on the chaise then? Of course. With the fabric scheme sewn up, we're setting our sights on storage for the dining room that also nods to the jumping off fabric. Are you seeing the price point on this? These are great. It's a pair. Mm -hmm. I actually think it would be better to use a pair. Well, the height is amazing. So you could put a lamp on top of it, or you can put a mirror above. You can dress the top surface with a tray, whatever. You can turn it into a bar. Use it however you want. Yeah. Great storage. It's got a shelf, perfect depth, and $730 for a pair. Let's see how it goes with our fabric. I think that looks amazing. If structural repairs eat into your budget, stretch your dollar by shopping vintage. You might find the right pieces for a fraction of the price of buying new. I don't know if I love the color, but the shape seems good. How many leaves has it got? Three leaves and a middle leg. It opens up, it's amazing. It says it's 150 bucks. It's 150 bucks? Give me this, we're buying this table. <laughs> All right. We're brightening this tight, cramped living and dining room. We started by fixing the bones of the place, then finding a flower-filled jumping-off point for fabrics. I was dreaming of a pink sofa. We're also addressing dining and storage. Up next, new floors, paint, and more finds that fit the brief. Today's case study is brightening up a dark, narrow living and dining space, and it starts with a fantastic floral fabric. I can go for the reds, the pinks, the yellows, the blues, the greens. Which informs other vibrant colors and extends even to the furniture. But sometimes, before you get to the pretty, you've got to get the bones right. There's a nail popping through right here. Okay. In this space, we need to address the floors. This is a mobile meeting, because oh, we need to make yes. a decision quickly. You asked okay. me to spec pre-finished flooring, because yeah. we're in a hurry and we want to lay it right down. No muss, no fuss, no mess. OK, so the $1.99 seems at first blush like the best deal. You got it. But if you're putting this in an old house where it's not perfectly even, when you install this floor, since you can't sand it over at the end to smooth it all out, this may not look great. Whereas the one that you've got here that's $3.95 a square foot, is actually three quarters of an inch thick, mm -hmm. that once this is installed, it's yeah. gonna look a lot better. I bet it's gonna go down way faster. At a difference of about $600 overall, I would way prefer to go for the better flooring, and I love this color. Okay. Good? That was easy. Choosing the right stain for your floors can be tough. You don't want something that's gonna look outdated in a few years. So, avoid anything too light, or too dark, because it might look like a passing fad. Instead, opt for the middle ground, and you will have a timeless classic. Ooh, look at that smooth ceiling. This looks great. We are no longer on the moon. We're back on planet Earth. <laughs> and our floor is gone? That's great. The priming is looking good. It's yep. fresh. I love a clean slate. Ooh. The buttery tones of this paint pick up the background of the floral and give the room a lift. Color extends to the ceiling with a barely there willowy green, and for the stairwell, it's a darker accent of olive to give visual interest. What do you think? That's very nice. Okay, approved. And once the walls are painted, down go the floors. Our wood floor is underway, well underway, and it's gonna look fantastic. But we always need to be practical, even when we're trying to accomplish something on a budget. It doesn't make sense to carry the wood all the way up 
to the threshold at the front door. This is called Ocean Silver, an inexpensive limestone. It's got the cream and the greens that I'm using in the overall color palette, but I don't want it to just go down plain. I want to liven it up a bit. So I'm going to use the 12 by 24 tiles in the center, then four bands of this incredible jade green tumbled mosaic, and lastly, a band of the Ocean Silver to create an outer perimeter. Natural stone can take any abuse weather can throw at it. If you have a small area like this entry, you can create big impact for a small investment. And as the tile goes down, it's time to hunt for just the right side chairs for our fun floral fabric. What do you think about those chairs? I love those chairs. Great shape. And that seat height looks like it's the perfect dining room seat height. So these could, in a pinch, double as extra chairs at the heads of the table if they were entertaining. I want these chairs. Let's buy them. My advice to you for using a bold pattern, use it sparingly, use it carefully. Try and put it on a chair that has interesting lines. Once you combine an interesting shape of chair with a bold pattern, it is fantastic. Speaking of which, that bargain rug is bringing life to an ottoman. Meanwhile, the daybed separating the living and dining space is getting dressed in a light neutral. Perfect for extra seating, lounging, or snoozing. As for side tables... Hey, Tommy, how about these? I like those. They're just the right fit for a narrow room. In a Victorian house, where you generally have a narrow front window, mm -hmm. if you want to do a nice big sofa, there isn't enough room for side tables. Right. What if, instead of your classic base with a big shade, if right. you do a more contemporary lamp, we could put it against a traditional line of sofa. I mean, I just think these have such personality. And they're very interesting. Let's get them. Sure. And refinishing is a great way to teach an old table a new trick, like our $150 dining table. The cost of refinishing still makes this well-made second-hand piece a steal. Well, the color looks good. This is uh, white uh, latex, and um, we'll be finishing it with the water-based varnish as well. Instead of staining the whole table dark, which would make it too formal, we're mixing it up. The top will be light for a more relaxed, everyday look. I would be happy with this tone on the base, which is darker than the sample. The base and legs will be dark to match the other furniture in the room. All right, I think it looks good. A bold modern floral has led us to paint colors, entryway tile, accent chairs, and a two-tone table for our family-friendly dining room. Next, how to light it. This is big impact, it's the star of the show. Then we'll add accessories. A dark, cluttered living and dining space doesn't need to stay that way. I'm fully committed to the bold floral. Okay. Give it a personality transplant with bright colors, fun fabrics, and properly scaled furniture. Our dime store dining table demands equally uplifting seating. Hey, what do you think about this chair? Looks comfortable. I like it. It has a nice flex to the back. I think it's maybe a little bit the pendulum swinging too far toward modern. I've always liked this one. Gorgeous. Kind of nice because it's got the transparency in the back. Let me try it. You see, I don't find this as comfortable as the first option. How about that one? That is a great looking chair. Is it cushy on your tushy? Oh, it's very comfortable. Extremely comfortable. Fully upholstered. Yep. The texture is the same kind of texture we're going with on our chairs, on our sofa, on everything else. Yes. It has a seat cushion. Oh, it's removable. And with a zipper, awesome. Washable. And price-wise, oh, hello. More. This chair is $239. The one that you find uncomfortable, the black wood one, $229. For $10 more, wouldn't you go for fully upholstered? You're getting a lot for your extra $10 here. And what do you know, it works with our jumping off floral. We found our chair. Of course, you can't depend solely on fabrics to brighten a room. Lighting certainly helps, like some new pots and a hanging fixture for the dining room that says glam. What? That says glam! We're definitely not looking for accent lighting in the dining room. This is big impact. It's the star of the show. Oh, how about that one? It's kind of funky. When selecting a chandelier, make sure it's no wider than your dining table. It can sit in a few inches on either side. 
How about that one? That, I think, is my favorite of all of the ones that we've seen. It has a really nice wide spread. It's got some nice width to it. I love the little floral rosettes. I think we need to go whole hog glitz and glamour because we don't have anything else that's hanging down into the space. Right. Abraham? Yes? Can I get prices from you on a couple of these fixtures? Yes. How much is this one here with the brass frame on it? $375. And how about this one here? This is $550. Can you do any better? Four fifty for seventy-five dollars more, at least a hundred dollars more fixture. And is it wired and ready to go? Wired, ready to go. <sighs> okay, so I say we take that. Dining rooms are the perfect place for drama, which doesn't need to be expensive. These colorful plates are secondhand. I'm attaching brackets you can find in any hardware store to the backs with epoxy adhesive. Once the brackets are set and allowed to dry for a good eight hours, it's time to hang them up. Play with the shapes and sizes to make them cascade on the wall. I love it. From dated and dingy, we're well on our way. With a few finishing touches, this place is almost ready to make its vibrant debut. Even these drapes bring in the light. Tommy and I originally planned to have the decorative band of green on the leading edge of the drape, which is the drape that you pull close towards the center. It's a little bit small, and I wanted to make it seem grander and bigger than it is. So here's what I did. I moved the band of green to the outside edge, which makes it seem bigger than it is. Plus, I made the drapes wider than I normally would. In this case, I went 10 inches beyond. So it'll clear the window completely, and it makes the window overall seem bigger and grander than it actually is. And the good stuff doesn't have to end there. Okay, so what would you like to put on the living room wall? Maybe the single piece of artwork, the print that we have, because okay. it's colorful, it's contemporary, which is a nice juxtaposition against our floral. I'm fine with that. I'm worried that it might look a little bit light, but maybe we could actually sneak in one of the florals to help fill it up. Sure. What do you like best in the front entry? The really crazy ornate mirror. It is better suited to go above the entry cabinet. You could use either silver or gold-toned accents in this room. The chandelier I found has some subtle gold or brass accents, so I'm gonna go with gold tones throughout the room. And I think we could use the streamlined gilded mirror in the dining room. It will help anchor that space. A dark and drab living dining room is getting hot shots of color and style. Is it cushy on your tushy? Oh, it's very comfortable. We fixed and repaired the bad stuff, did a cute little project. I love it. And devised light, bright, achievable solutions. See how it all comes together next. I want it to feel a little more current, a little more modern. Ready to see how we've pulled it off? Here's the challenge of living in a small, narrow home. You need to find comfortable pieces that have the right proportion so they fit in the space. I'm here to tell you, that's possible. I decided to opt for a sofa that was just shy of seven feet long, which is standard proportions, and then decided to downsize the side tables to make it happen. It was worth making that trade-off. Talk about a metamorphosis. It's the same space, but it's amazing how color and light can transform a space. So tasteful, so beautiful, so open and bright and spacious that it makes me really, really happy to be there. What should you look for in a floral if you want something contemporary and fresh and fun? Go for overscaled, bold, and graphic. The best piece of furniture in this entire project has got to be that pink sofa. It is a very, very strong color statement, but it's also a classic sofa that's so updated with that amazing punch of color. Using a daybed to divide a room is an ideal choice. It allows flexible, comfortable seating you can perch from either side when you're entertaining. But unlike a sofa, it doesn't have a high back that blocks the sight lines from one end of the room to the next. Wondering how big your living room rug should be? At least the front two feet of each piece of furniture should land on the rug. You don't want your area rug to seem like an island floating in the middle. 
pulling down the old ceiling, reinforcing the ceiling joists, and installing new drywall and soundproofing ran us about $3,000. Admittedly, $3,000 we didn't really want to spend, but sometimes you need to fix the framework before you can add the pretty. We have to address lighting as being a layered element. So we have lamp lighting, which brings things down to a lovely human scale when it's nighttime. We have overhead pot lighting, which is great for turning up when you're cleaning and having nice and dim at normal times. Great chandelier, and there you have the three main elements. Want silk drapes but think you can't afford them? Well, you might just be shopping in the wrong place. Instead of opting for drapery designated silk, think instead about dressmaking silk. It can usually be found for $15 to $20 a yard. The weight is perfect and it comes in a multitude of shades. I think it's a very, very formal element to add in a family home but it's the right place to put silk. You wouldn't want it on cushions where people are gonna be leaning against it or where the dog could get at it. But if you put it up on the windows, it looks really, really beautiful and really, really formal. And now we've given her some serious upscale glamour. If you have pets in the house, especially anything that sheds, you do not want extra dark floors. All of the hair and all of the fluff will show. Choose something a little bit more forgiving in a mid-tone range, and you're good to go. How wide does your dining table need to be? Well, that depends on how you like to entertain. I like to have enough room for a place setting and lots of room down the center of the table. Candles, flowers, and serving pieces full of fabulous food. We started out with a cluttered, chaotic mix of outdated items, and now we have a lively, lovely mix of color and character. Okay, here's a question. Is this cute or awful? Awful. Okay, no, okay, it's awful. Okay, how about this? Love that chair. Does that seem a bit grand and throne-like? Is grand and throne-like ever a problem? Maybe not in your world. Do I have to? Okay, does this completely...